After the palace was bombed in 1940, the Queen Mother was reported to have said she could now look the East End in the face. Whole swathes of the poorest districts of East London were flattened in the Blitz. But the tightly packed network of streets in the Whitechapel area is remembered with vibrant clarity in Journey Through a Small Planet, a 1972 memoir by the writer and playwright Emmanuel Litvinov. Born in 1915 to Russian Jewish parents, Litvinov records poverty, hunger and racism, but also music, stories and camaraderie in the Jewish East End. The book has been republished with a new introduction by the writer and broadcaster Patrick Wright. Emmanuel Litvinov is now 93. 16 years ago he was interviewed by Patrick Wright and took a tour of his childhood district. Yesterday Patrick and I retraced their steps. This street that we're on is it's called Old Montague Street and I remember when I came walking here with Emmanuel Litvinov in the late, uh, the early 90s, um, we set off down here and he was keen to see it because it had been the very heart of the Jewish world that he remembered. He has his anarchist bookshops on it. And he, he remembered as, as he came through in the 70s, in the early 70s, he'd seen the last door of an old synagogue, I think just about to go on a skip. But when I came through with him in 92, we got about this far, and the, I remember he just stopped and said, there's no point going any further, it's all gone. And we're less and, than 100 yards from Brick Lane. Yeah, just off Brick Lane, but yeah. it has all been redeveloped. And uh, you, know, you, couldn't, you wouldn't know there had been a Jewish world here. There's an ambivalence in the book, isn't there? Because he describes the, the fear, the violence, the poverty and the deprivation, but also a great affection for a lot of the vibrancy, the noise and the detail. And yes, I, well, when I talked to Emmanuel in 1995, on the occasion of his 80th birthday, um, he was full of this. I mean, he, saw, he talked about this world as being people with characters who had nothing. They had not a pair of shoes to stand up in. They were utterly threadbare. And yet they were transforming the whole world in their language and their rhetoric and their thinking. And he loved the energy of it. He loved the sense of um, possibility that was locked into its poverty. It had undoubtedly an extraordinary throbbing vitality. Tremendous arguments used to go on in the tea shops, like Goyd's famous tea shop in the Whitechapel Road, where the intellectuals used to meet and argue passionately over a glass of lemon tea. I remember saying to him, why do you call this a small planet? He said, well, it's small because there's only a few streets. Obviously, it's a few, it's sort of a few thousand people. But it's a planet because the whole world's jammed into it. Mm. He said, you know, people, you sit on your mother's knee and what are they talking about? Some rabbi in Odessa, whether Trotsky's better for the Jews than Lenin, or, you know, all these points that come out of a Russian experience. They talked about events in, in, in Eastern Europe as though they were happening really next door, you see. They were very much involved in that, hardly at all involved in what was going on in the larger English society that was around us. So we've walked north up Brick Lane, Patrick, and we've come off onto Bacon Street. Uh, and this is, this is Litvinov territory, childhood territory. Yeah, he was, he was terrified of this street. I think the name Bacon is so much, it's non-Jewish, but also it was a non-Jewish street. And he describes as a very young boy having to run down it because the, the hostility and the insults and the sort of anti-Semitic stuff that was going on was very much part of the experience. And I've always thought the fact that he lived, he grew up right next to a street called Bacon Street becomes a kind of literary motif for him because in many of his books one finds the smell of pork seeping into scenes at various moments and it's always indicative of a kind of um, difficulty, you know, sort of a a difficulty with the host culture. There are a lot of smells in the book and particularly when he describes moving into the tenement block at Fuller Street, his first childhood home. In fact, he says very clearly, it's my very first memory. The smell, the stench of onions and of sweat and of garbage and of dustbins that haven't been emptied. But for, for Emmanuel, memory is, is most interesting because the re- one of the reasons I think Jenny Through a Small Planet is a fascinating book is because it's, it's not just nostalgic. I mean, of course, he's filled with nostalgia for that world that has indeed vanished. But he's also very mixed about it. I mean, he describes very movingly how he developed the eye of the, the people who hated the Jewish world. I and mean, he actually developed the perspective of the racist and started being self-conscious about Jewish humour and herring ladies and the sight of people trading in Petticoat Lane and how he moved out on a wave of revulsion, of self-loathing. The the feeling was you had to get away from the East End, otherwise somehow or other you were doomed to a life of um, sweatshop, labour and uh, poverty and also a kind of narrow-minded parochial society, which it wasn't actually, but that's what it seemed to us. Uh, for, for a short while, when I was about 15, I changed my name, actually. I what called to? myself Len H. Lee. 
He, he knew he wanted to be a writer. He wanted to record the world around him. He says very clearly he knew he didn't want to be a tailor, he didn't want to be driving a printing press, even as a kid. Knew he wanted to do something different. Yeah, he was, he was looking out. He was looking outward. And he came from this remarkable family, totally, totally poor, poverty-stricken. Yeah. Um, father disappeared, never came back, went back to Russia in the First World War. Mother, you know, taking him work of every sort just to keep things going. And yet he came with this high ambition and he wanted to do things. And writing was, was a dream to him. It was something that he would never be able to do. It was unimaginable. When I was about 15 and a half, 16, I was working in a, in a, a, a furniture factory and I remember I was mixing some glue and uh, some lines of a poem came to me and I, I wrote, scribbled them down, put them in my pocket. And I always remember the first two lines, I can't remember the rest of it. Um, Farewell, O oh queen of the night, dark mistress of my cosmic dreams. And I didn't know where the hell it came and, from. And you were off. And I was off from <laughs> then on. He went on to forge a, a successful career as a novelist, and particularly as a TV dramatist. But um, Emmanuel Litvinov himself says this is the book, Journeys Through a Small Planet, is the book by which he should be remembered. Yes, I think he's right. This is the core. This is the portrait of the world from which everything else came. And I think this is the... But you can get it. There is no other record of the Jewish East End like this. There are lots of people who have written about it. But this is the one that gives you the edge. You know, it has, it, has the, it has the local detail, but it also has the culture, and it also has the sense of importance and why these worlds really matter. As far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a book I've written that I personally like best. I think that book could well be read in a hundred years' time, which I doubt will be the face of my other books. I don't know. Who can tell? <laughs> Does that worry you? The others won't be? Not or, at all. You're lucky enough. Not at one, all. I, not at all. Somehow or other, I, all the vanity that I had, like everybody else, had been shaken out of me by, by life and circumstances. And uh, uh, I, I, I really don't give it a thought. Emmanuel Litvinov, his memoir Journey Through a Small Planet, with an introduction by Patrick Wright, is republished by Penguin Classics.